And I bought a house in 2009. And I finally started to grow up at the age of 40. No more labs and warehouses in my apartment. Yeah, at least no permanent ones. No space to store 60 desktop PCs stacked on the wall. Only a small office that I now wanted to look like an office most of the time. I had a double door closet and room for two small bookshelves and, and a big desk. I knew I could make it work, though, if I made my main computer in that closet into the new lab in the warehouse. It would take some doing. It would take fast, small computers, large hard drives, powerful, cheap software. That's all. I replaced my little 120 gigabyte hard drive with a 750 gig one. Then I jumped up to one terabyte. Then I jumped up to two terabytes. Then I jumped to three. And I also bought me a little 320 gig external hard drive to use for backups. Then I replaced that with a 500 gig. Then a terabyte. Then two terabytes. Then three terabytes. I also fell in love with Micro Center's cheap, fast USB flash drive. I upgraded from a 256 megabyte one to a 4 gigabyte one, then an 8 gigabyte, then 16 gig, 32, 64, 128. They got a 256 gig one out now, and Christmas is coming. Oh, I like my storage space now. So I replaced all my old desktops and old laptops with newer laptops. I actually did this by using some information generated by inventories that I got from laptop resellers that taught me the best Dell laptop model values in terms of speed and price. Bought a bunch of broken ones and fixed them. Built a shelf in my closet just for laptops. This became part of my new warehouse. Now, I call the hard drive in my main computer. That's the other part of my warehouse. I warehouse files, information. I bought several small folding tables that fit in my closet. Very small. I bought overlapping cabinet shelves that I could also use on my desk. Put them on my workbench. I'm not using them, I can put them on my desk. And then it extended the space available on the table. The laptops, cabinet shelves, and the tables became my new lab. I replaced Hip Hop EJ version 5 with Magic's Music Maker version 16. Because Magic's Music Maker had sound pools, called sound pools. These are DVD sound collections that could be purchased separately and cheaply. I found a bunch of them, built a nice archive of sounds. That helped me start warehousing a track on my computer. Anytime I make one, I put it in the warehouse. See, I was doing what I saw Jay Dilla do with a slightly different approach to organizing my work because I read that he wouldn't use some beats because he had trouble clearing the samples because he couldn't remember where he got the sample from. So, okay, if I got a well-organized collection of samples, I won't run into that. I discovered new storytelling tools like Pictures to EXE. This is an Adobe Flash like slideshow and video maker. Andrea Photo Mosaic. This made large pictures that were comprised of smaller pictures like cubes. VideoPad Video Editor. That's my version of Final Cut Pro. Common thread between each tool, even Hip Hop EJ, is that they're all produced outside of the United States in places like Germany, 
Great Britain. They're excellent tools, but they're relatively unknown in the United States. So telling people what I use was just like not telling them. Folks would look at you like you're crazy. If you told them you didn't use Adobe Premiere, which I couldn't afford, or Final Cut Pro, which is free on a MacBook that I could not afford. So I, I stopped telling them what I use. Keep that to yourself, man. And I discovered the power of cloud computing through Dropbox. Watch Dropbox's version history feature. That alone is worth the yearly subscription fee that I pay for my one terabyte of cloud space. It maintains several versions of your overwritten and deleted files long enough for you to recover from boo-boos. And I have made more than one writing boo-boo. Write something, overwrite it, realize I don't have the right version. I go back to Dropbox and get it. I discovered the discontinued but excellent Flip HD camera and the underappreciated Logitech C910 HD webcam that is bringing me into your countenance right now. Both of these are still storytelling weapons for me. I learned that I could mount that flip camera on a tripod, but it was so lightweight and steady, I could shoot landscape videos just by holding it in my hand in the portrait orientation. And you can't see that, but that was good design. Oh, I applaud that kind of design. The Logitech webcam delivered 1080p well focused crystal clear video as long as you were within four feet of it. You get farther away than that, it starts having some focus problems. Remember, this is a webcam. You're supposed to be right in front of it. Now, it also had a really nice built in mic. And I assume that it did not because I was thinking with my eyes and I couldn't see the mic. So I assumed it did not have one, or if it did, it wasn't a very good one. I didn't discover that it had a great mic until I shot a test video in 2014. Now I knew I was building up the courage to start creating video commentaries and podcasts. And I was building up to unleashing stand-up storytelling. But I had a lot to, on my mind. I had a lot to get off my chest, but I had to see. I didn't want to record Venom, so I kept writing essays, putting them on my blog, kept creating editorial infographics, and working through my stuff and getting my confidence up and getting my getting my story right. I didn't quite know what kind of stories I wanted to tell just yet. I had to work through all of that. Now, the test video was made to accompany my application to speak at a professional conference. Now, I was not invited to speak at the conference, but the attempt still provided some serendipity. When I listened to the video, I got the notion, hey, this sounds really good. I could probably record music through the webcam. Don't tell nobody because that just does not sound sexy. So I made a few more videos of me reciting my best spoken word efforts. Now, it might not have been much to watch on camera, but I heard clear sonic quality. So I said, no, nah, man, this is, this is good. This is good. Now, watching those videos, though, let me see how much I hurt. That was, that was real. And then I was still pretty hot about some of the things that had happened to me. And I'm watching myself and, and, and hearing myself. So this pain was lingering despite this all-time level of happiness that I've got. Because I'm married now. I've got a beautiful daughter, beautiful wife and daughter. I got everything. Seeing that hurt on my face and hearing it in my voice, that turned out to be a very good thing, man. Because you heal what you feel. You gotta feel it. So I had to let myself feel it. 
and turn it into some quality content. Now this would take a while, but I got there because I was right here.